facing type of shoe where maybe it's in a park. You know what I mean? A good park trail race, okay? Here we go, second video publishing today. First impressions of the Skechers Go Run Speed TRL Hyper. That is a mouthful, Skechers. I think the TRL stands for, it's I shortened for trail, I do believe. And yes, it is a trail racing shoe from Skechers, all right? But I'm not racing on the trails for a long, long time, so I wanted to take it out today for an eight mile run in the mud. As you can see, it's very muddy. It was solid time out there, slipping around and having a good time in the snow and the ice and the mud. And here we go, let's dive in. 26 millimeter stack height in the heel, 22 in the forefoot, so a four millimeter drop, pretty low, I would say, for a racing shoe. And it, uh, it definitely has a minimalist feel, really. Um, it, yeah, it's not, that midsole is pretty lean overall. And I guess I'll say right now that if you're racing on a rocky trail, this is probably not the shoe for you. I was feeling the rocks through the, uh, through the midsole and the outsole today out there at Deer Creek. The weight though, here we go, 8.2 ounces in men's size nine. Uh, so that's, it's a lightweight shoe for sure, especially out there on the trails. And I almost forgot to mention that this is not my full review. This is just my first impression after the first run, okay? So moving on to the upper, very comfortable upper. Now it's not, you know, waterproof at all. Like my foot was pretty soaked today out there, but very comfortable, very simple. Uh, laid on top of the foot very nicely. Now it's unique though, very unique. Something I've never seen before in the upper of really any shoe. So basically on the tongue, this side of the tongue is one piece of material. But this side of the tongue, the outside of the shoe is open. So it's like a half gusseted tongue. So only half of the tongue is connected to the shoe. It's very interesting. I have to mess around with the lacing a little bit more through the eyelet chain just to see how it will lay on top of my foot moving forward. But I got to say, very, very comfortable. And, um, you know, it, it has the booty style collar around that wraps around your ankle that is reinforced with this locking. They're calling it their locking system, which I felt secure today. I really did. And I was going, you know, 1800 feet of vertical gain today out there on the trails. But this locking system, it's one, it's like basically a piece of uh, a cord that wraps around the outside of the collar, right around there through the heel counter, and then through the top of the eyelet chain, as you lace it, lace it in there, um, you, it, uh, I don't know, I felt very secure. So that locking system, again, I will continue to test it out and see how it does Moving forward, okay, it's that Hyperburst midsole, all right? Again, as I already mentioned, um, it's it, uh, the Hyperburst is lightweight, but it feels very minimalist, which if you're using this shoe for racing, that's, you know, it's kind of what you want. You want something lightweight, nothing too heavy, uh, depending obviously on the distance that you're racing and the terrain. Like I said, if your race course uh, is really rocky, this is probably not the ideal shoe to take out there. Now between that midsole and outsole, there is a rock plate. Not sure if you can see that piece of red right there. Uh, that is the rock plate. And I'll just continue to test on rocky trails here in Colorado. Like, will that rock plate protect my foot from the, uh, yeah, the jagged edges out there on the trails? We shall see. Moving on to the outsole. It's a Goodyear rubber, all right? I love how Skechers has a partnership with Goodyear. And I finally figured out Adidas has their partnership with Continental Rubber. So uh, Adidas uses Continental Rubber for their outsoles and Skechers is using Goodyear uh, Rubber for their outsoles. I love the innovation and the cross-pollination of major, major industries. Now I will say the traction was not ideal. It was not ideal, just putting it out there. I was in very muddy conditions toward the end of the run as the sun started to melt the snow and the ice and the lug depth is not amazing, all right? So what does that tell me? This shoe is gonna be more made for buffed out trails with not as much rocks and not as much mud, okay? So this is more, a more simple uh, trail racing type of shoe where maybe it's in a park, you know what I mean? A good park 
trail race, okay? Nothing crazy up in the mountains doing crazy stuff. I just, um, I'm not sensing it at this point. Again, I'll get you my full thoughts after 50 miles, but right now, it's a more simple trail racing type of shoe. Now, my, my number one positive, here we go. Actually, two. $115. That is what I'm talking about. It's really difficult, and yes, I'll just compare it to Solomon, the S-Lab Sent 7 SG. You're looking at $170, maybe $180 brand new, and the Sense 8 is about to come out, which I'll be testing for all of you very soon. But there's a huge, now the weight of the Sense uh, 7 is quite a bit less than, well, not quite a bit, but about uh, it's about an ounce, ounce and a half from the, uh, from the Skechers Go, I won't even try and say Sketch. All right, I will. Skechers Go Run Speed TRL Hyper. Um, so, but $115, that is hard to beat. And one last positive, once again, it is lightweight. So if you like a lightweight trail shoe that is not overly aggressive through the lug pattern, just something to give you a little extra grip as you're, you know, going through the parks near your house or uh, maybe there's a nice cross country course near your house and you love to go do, you know, laps on that or um, anyway, just nothing overly uh, aggressive with respect to rocks or mud. And how will I use the Skechers Go Run Speed TRL Hyper? I'm thinking speed days on bucked out trails. If I want to do a little bit of a workout, whether it's a tempo workout or some intervals or hill repeats on a buffed out mountain uh, trail, oh, I actually, you know what, if you're local, Mount Falcon. I think this shoe would actually do pretty well on Mount Falcon. Deer Creek was a little more loosey-goosey up there today, but Mount Falcon, this could be the one definitely not to take up on the 14ers here in Colorado. Just not quite enough protection for the feet, depending on the 14er, of course. So one last point before we wrap up is I'm sensing 10K to half marathon on the trails. That's the distance that I would put this shoe through for racing. Um, I don't know if I'd take it past half marathon, maybe, but I'm thinking 10K to half marathon would be a solid buffed out trail race type of shoe in case you're really, and yes, let's do it. Question of the day. Have you selected your trail racing shoe for 2020? Probably not. It's very early, but maybe you have some ideas that you want to ask about down below in the comments. Definitely let us know. So, because yes, as I'm getting a little excited for the uh, summer months when we can go run the trails a little bit more. And uh, anyway, so that's the question of the day. Thanks for hitting it up down below. There you go. First impressions, not my full review. Just want to make that clear. First impressions of the Skechers Go Run Speed TRL Hyper. All right, everyone, there you go. We're going to toss it back on the right to some other Skechers, uh, actually, sorry, the Skechers Max Road 4 first impression run. That'll be on the right, Skechers Max Road 4. And then also we'll toss back on the left to trail racing shoes of 2019. Trail racing shoes of 2019. All right, everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.